welcome to Crafters TV. How are you doing? Oh, it's lovely to have you with us. Eh? You're going to be really chuffed that you've tuned in because we have got some real treats on for you today if we've not met before. Hiya, I'm Becky. No middle name. Just Becky Redican. Actual name, Rebecca Redican. Um, it's lovely to be with you today, and we have got not only fantastic t treats and deals, I've even got you a super duper special saver code, which I'll tell you about momentarily. Before that, though, let's say Heidi, hi to Corinne. Hiya. Hello. Good afternoon. We're all we're all revved up. Up. We've had lunch. Yeah. We've maybe had a little bit of sun i missed the sun i sat out inside but you know bit of sun bit of lunch and we're ready to go for the afternoon ready to, to ready to go yeah absolutely we've got loads of goodies today we haven't have. we yeah packed, packed. absolutely ram packed full so this masterclass is all about our core tools and if you are brand new maybe you've stumbled upon us maybe a friend recommended us uh, maybe you're just you know flicking about you saw a little a bit of an advert and you thought oh wait up i might tune in and see what that's about if that is the case you've tuned in on the perfect day because we're going to go through everything that you not only want but need and we're going to be going through it in really great detail we want to give you the opportunity to for example finally get around to owning you know the absolute premium quality beauty professionalism that is our genomide die cutting machine but also we want to give you the opportunity to be able to work with those elements and consumables that you need and we want you to be able to do it with an extra smile on your face so we have got our showtime surprise which today is 10% off absolutely anything that you want to get your hands on. You can get it off with a 10% code. All you have to do at checkout, in that little box, type in the code CTV10, CTV10. That's going to get you 10% off. And yes, it will even get you 10% off elements that we already have a discount on. So it's so worth mentioning as well. It is just one per customer and it is today and today only. So seize the moment, stock up on all of those essentials. And I have got essentials. We are going to be bringing to you a massive range of our fabulous adhesives here at CTV because we know how much we need them. We know how much we adore them. And I want to start off, if I may, by bringing to you our 3D Kalel Glue Set. And this really is a set. It's a kit. It's got everything you need in it to be able to create really wonderful depth to your designs that is steadfast. So... Today, I'm bringing it to you, 30% discount, and you're also going to be getting that wonderful 10% off code too, and this comes with everything you need. We are diving on into a little bit of a um, glue school. Bring! Mm. That was meant to be like a school bell, but it sounded more like a sort of 1950s phone call, didn't it? Um, but either way, the glue school is now open. If you've got any questions about glue, then please do get in touch. I've also, oh, by the way, it sets the three, all of these. I will also bring to you some tacky glue. We have got this on the show today. Again, you're going to get a trio set for the price. It is a, a really lovely size. You can see you've got your 100 mil in there. And if you do want to decant it out into your smaller um, kind of decanters, pipettes, if you will, your applicators, then this will do it a few times. Three of those for just $9.98 for three um, today and you've got $12.98 on those ones as well saving over 30 percent let's go next up um which one are we going to next sorry the all-purpose so i've got your all-purpose glue up for you next this one is one that if you want rigidity to your pieces and you want a little bit of wriggle time this is definitely a great one to go for check out that price wow. Blimey! It's a buy, buy, buy two, buy two, get one free. That's brilliant. Uh, I've also got for you on that one the 3D foam selection. So we've got loads of your uh, wonderful foam here and we've got it in different varieties. So let me show you. You're going to be getting different size ones that are kind of pre-cut for you, if you will. So you're going to be getting 320 of the double-sided six mil 
and you've got that um <coughs> excuse me the 12 mil by 6 mil sorry so you've got the 12 sheets if that makes sense um and you've got the variations essentially so you th 12 6 and your three you're getting the sets of those and you're also getting our foam sheet so this one you get again have got those different thicknesses and um, dependent on size I'm not sure if you can see that if you look at the side but you're getting the different thicknesses depending on what kind of finishing result you want and again discount deal on it today you're saving 15 percent meaning that it is just 14.65 or 30 dollars 37 so you've got all of that now one of our favorites 3d uh, your red liner tape sorry now we've got three different thicknesses four different jobs we're bringing you the three pack don't forget of each of these just to make that clear so you're getting your three millimeter one first off three sets of these you're going to be getting and the lovely thing about these ones is if you've got anything delicate and dainty that needs to be really really sturdy stuck this is the one for you i have also got for you our six millimeter one this one's six millimeter. Again, if you've got a little bit more space, then you can really amp it up with that thickness. But as we love our red liner tape, double-sided for anyone who's new. And once it is stuck, boy oh boy, it is stuck. And last but by no means least, I've got your 12 mil. Now the 12 mil is for any of those areas, whether it's boxes or whether it's um, kind of 3D giftables that you want really large space and area to be adhered, great one to go for. It's really quick and easy to use. And today it is a bargain. I don't know why I said it like that. It was a bit weird that one, it? Sheep. Somebody let that sheep out. Oh, you. And um, we've got $9.99 or $20.99 for you on that one today. If you want to treat yourself, and now is most certainly your chance on those. And again, I know I keep saying it, but three of each of them. Glue school is open and um, we have got loads of you in with us. Hello to Mary saying good morning from Maine. Hello to Janet saying hi from Michigan. Janice is in with us as well. Hi to Heather. Good afternoon from um, Hull. Hello to you, my love. Loads of you in with us today. If you've got any questions, get them in whilst we're live. But for now, should we dive on into glue school? Uh, uh, Corinne, what's our first lesson today? We're going to look at our 3D collage glue and um, so we should look at this one first so this is your um it, as it says it's transparent and it's odorless but it's dimensional glue so what you're going to get is you're going to get your glue and you get your little syringe now some people like to use this glue straight out of the tub and you can do that let me just clean the end of this it's really easy to use what you have to remember is this glue sets with air just like this one somebody put that one away let me get the other one out that one has been they haven't done what I'm about to tell you you need to do. So, oh, got a nice new one there. Right, I can sort that one out in a minute. So when you get this, it'll be sealed just like that. And then what you need to do is just take off the little seal, just like that. Now, ready to go. Oh, we'll be, there we go, get rid of that. And then you can just squeeze it out and then you can use it straight off there and then you can use it dimensional like that. Now, a lot of us like to use it in the syringe, and we use it in the syringe because it's just easier to use. So all you need to do is you can then just pop up there, so you can use a little bit, or you can use a lot. It's entirely, entirely up to you. You can see how controllable that is. Now, what this is, is it, uh, it says on here it is a solvent free glue so you don't need to worry about um, it reacting with anything that you're going to um, to craft with now what you need to do is, as I was saying is make sure let me just see if I can get that last little bit of film off the top make sure that you don't have any air in the top so what we tend to do squeeze a little bit out to the top can you just if I do it that way, can you see there's a little bit at the top and then screw on the lid when you finish. And that means that there's no air in that tube and I know it's not going to set. And I do the, exactly the same with the syringe, is I make sure I've got the glue right to the end before I put the lid on. And you can see there's no air in there and there's no air at the top. So what am I likely to use this on? I'm going to put use it for anything that I want um, height and dimension. If I was trying to be really, really quick, I might do some mats and layers with it, but that really is quite a waste because you'd be better with your foam pads. So what I've done here is I've used my 
this is a different one, but I've used my Gemini um, decoupage flowers and I've cut out all of the layers. So I'm going to keep this layer flat, my first layer, and then I'm going to add a little bit of dimension to the next layer. So I could come in actually with this and I could build it up with foam pads and it would look lovely. But if I want it to look a bit more realistic, let's come behind here and add a little bit of shape and dimension just behind there just like that so we can add the shape and then my next layer there we go and the next layer and the next layer like that so I've now got a little bit of shape now if I was to put foam pads on I would lose some of that shape so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this I always like to use my tweezers just because I find my hands get in the way and then I can put glue at the points where I've added that dimension. And look how easy it is to control it with the syringe. If you want to do it straight out of the tube, you can, but I just find it so much easier this way. So I can put it down there. I always say it's a good self leveler because I can press it down and it will naturally find the right level. So it doesn't matter, you can just put a little tiny bit in there, just in the center. And when you put that little bit of pressure on, it just levels it out you can see on there and then you wait to see when I turn this round in a minute the dimension now this is sort of what we call touch dry in 20 minutes if I was to lift this off it would um, come straight off now which actually if I was making flowers or doing something with flowers on that's really handy because it means I can readjust I can lift it up to put a little bit of foliage in however you wanted to I finished that so I'm just going to make sure the glue is right at the end and then put the lid on but now that looks beautiful from that side but look at that up oh, from the top just a minute if you can see down that there there we go can you see how much dimension I've got in there and as I say for the next 20 minutes I can lift any of these off if I needed to, just like that, and put them back on. In about 20 minutes, that will have dried. Now, if I was going to put that onto a card, and I was going to post that card or put the card in an envelope, I'd leave it overnight, possibly up to 24 hours. What I tend to do very often is when I'm making flowers, is I'll make a whole box full, put them on one side, and then use them on my card making at a later date. But that is how you get, look at that, all that dimension into your project and that's using your 3d glue and i just think it's brilliant it's an absolutely perfect glue for the job and you're going to use it so much absolutely and the wonderful thing is you saw that grim was using the syringe with that you don't have to buy that it comes in here um, it also has like a little key that comes with it as well so all of the tools are in here you get three of these in this deal today for your 3d glue just to give you an idea of the kind of price you're getting here they're normally eight qu uh, eight quid each aren't they eight pounds each $13.95 each usually so it's a wonderful opportunity for you to treat yourself to this today when you've got such a fabulous discount hello to all of you so nice to speak to you today good morning from Houston in Texas says Betsy I up Betsy how are you um I've got um um Jeffrey in saying it's a holiday here in the USA it's Juneteenth absolutely oh are you doing anything special for it I know that some states get um, some states get the week the day off, don't they? I know not not all states do, but if you have got the day off, um, Jeffrey, I hope you're having a good one. Let us know if you're doing anything nice with it. Um, Irene is in saying good morning, Becky, Karina, and the CTV team. Um, Pandas Craft is in with us. Hiya um, from Sunny Donny. There's loads and loads of you joining us today. If you have got any questions, do pose them to us. And I have actually got one from Beth. Um, which Ooh. I will ask you now. Um, she's asking, what is the best glue or adhesive for vellum? I don't like using brads. Right, we've had this question quite a lot recently. And the, you can, one of the least likely to show is your red liner. It's least likely. But what I would say to you is every time when you're using vellum, try and apply your adhesive, whatever adhesive you want to use, because also you, a very small amount of your tacky glue might work. But always try and put it in invisible areas. So if you've got, um, if I was going to stick some vellum onto here, 
and then I was going to I wanted to put that so let's let's go this way because it's more likely you've got a plain piece of card and you're going to put your vellum on top and then I've got a flower to put on top I would attach my ve attach my vellum to this piece underneath there do you see where I'm saying to yeah. hide it now if I had a frame to go around the outside with the vellum I'd obviously put I could use my red liner tape all the way around there so it depends what you're doing I would always say try and put it underneath any embellishments where you can or under a frame try and hide it the best you can but if you can't then a little bit of red liner and you probably won't be able to see it especially some of our vellums they're really good thick quality vellums as yeah. well Mm -hmm. If you do want the red liner tape, it's the six mil that is on your screen right now. I hope that helped you, Beth. Do feel free to come through with any more of your questions. So what are we looking at next, please, Corinne? I think we're going on to... I want to do a sort of compare and contrast between our tacky glue and our collal glue. Lovely. Now, your collal glue won't look exactly like this. You've got the bottle... 100 uh, mil. Yeah, so I've got the 250 mil pot, so you're going to get more than this pot. Um, and so you are actually going to have the sort of little applicator on the top of your collar glue. But because we use so much of it, they give us this large one, but it's exactly the same. Now, collal glue is, um, it is a solvent-based adhesive. So what you want to be doing is it's going to be, it is the best glue for doing your matting and layering. It, sort of you've got a few minutes before it dries so you, it's going to give you that wiggle room but what it also does is it dries absolutely rock hard so it's going to add strength so you know if you're doing something that might be a little bit delicate and you think it's going to bow on the front of your card well use your collal glue behind it and that's going to give you that extra rigidity so it's absolutely perfect now what i'm going to show you is the difference between tacky glue and collal glue I'm just going to jump. Now, I put this together, yes, not yesterday, Saturday. That's the right day, yeah. So I went around my craft room. So this is just our um, mount board. And I've attached plastic, glass, be beads. I put ribbon. I've attached metal. Look at that, the metal. I mean, I suppose if I put my uh, pokey tool underneath, but that is stuck. That's glass. Buttons. My ribbon on wood. That's a brad upside down. I use, put a little bit of my tacky glue and some mini beads, paper flowers, lace, um, sisal. We all like our sisal on our cards. Metal, wood, and another bit of wood, and that was glitter. All of those have stuck brilliantly, and that's because I've used my tacky glue. And it's the best glue if you're wanting to attach anything like an embellishment to your project. So we'll have a look at that one again in a minute. Fabulous. So if I was to get my collal glue first, let's make sure I just take off that little bit of a... where the little bit of glue's dried over the top. And I put it on the back of this piece of paper. So this is just two mats and layers. So I thought I'd use exactly the same paper for both of them to show you. So again, less is more. You're not going to need too much. I can put that on. I can then put my mat and layer. Now, if I touch down, that's not very straight, as you can see. I haven't got to worry about that because I can actually straighten it up. I've got the time to be able to straighten my mats and layers. I can now just push down here and I can really work that glue. So I'm just going to rub all over, just add a little bit of warmth, even turn it over if you want. Now, can you see there is no sign of the glue coming through at all i've not got any marks any watermarks and this card is nice and solid if i accidentally got a little bit of glue can you see the glue you on can yeah you can just all i need to then. do is rub and just rub can you see it goes a little bit grainy and that will rub off and it hasn't taken the coating of my cardstock and that's gone so if you have put too much on and, you, and it eeks out the side just rub it off with your finger and it will disappear so yeah. we're going to leave that i could still separate that if i wanted to look you can see it's still separatable Separ separatable What's the yeah word? sure separatable? yeah you can still separate, separate. it yeah separatable bubble yeah sure <laughs> right so put that to one side 
let me just do the lid back up on my glue which is a bit out of here let's do it with the tacky glue now as we said this was a solvent based glue this is a water based glue so it's an all purpose glue and it's abs as i showed you absolutely brilliant for putting on my embellishments when you see us use it you'll probably see us use it in these little bottles yeah. so these are brilliant and i'll show you why in a minute because that means i can really control the glue and you get the little pins to go with it as well but if i wanted to do exactly the same mats and layers so i've used the same paper and then i put this glue onto here let's put my glue on here i'm going to get the same wiggle room which is brilliant come on come out there we go it's coming th oh, i've got a little lump let's see if i can get rid of that little ah look i've got a little stringy bit there we go oh just stretches stringy bit oh how long is that there we go let's see if that there there we go i think that's right now let me just wipe that off my hands don't worry i've got plenty of time before this goes completely tacky so it didn't matter about that i can now there we go you can see i can now pop this onto here there we are right so i'm going to pop it across the middle of here and there we go make sure it's going to come all over now we can then pop this onto here and like we say exactly the same paper and card to put onto there so we can now smooth that out and straight away it feels different under my hands yep a little bit will poke out but that will dry clear so i don't need to worry about that either so let's just make sure and again if it if it's not quite right i've got time to lift it and turn it around it's not it goes tacky ooh, after a few minutes so the longer you know give it a few minutes that one i'm just going to put it that way around it fits better that way give it a few minutes to dry so we can pop that on there perfectly absolutely brilliant right i'm going to leave those and we're going to come back to those in a minute because straight away already i don't know if you can see that i can feel that there starting to buckle a little bit because it's soaking into the cardstock so when so the quick question is if my cardstock is uncoated such as this i will always go for my collal glue if my cardstock had a coating like this the solvent in my collal will try to um, amend that so that is when i would definitely get my um, multi-purpose out quite sparingly go over the top of there with my collal and then i can put that onto my coated cardstock which is going to look absolutely perfect okay so let's leave these for a minute and we shall come back to these in a minute i can already i can feel this i can feel this starting to little bit of wiggle room so we can come back and have a look at that but what that multi-purpose is good for is if i've got something like this i've got something that's really really intricate and then we can pop we can decant it into our applicator and we can come round and we can come around all the little intricate places just like that and i can come straight across there so you just use a small amount little beads of my all-purpose and, and pop that. a small amount of this goes a long way, oh, doesn't it? goes it? a very long way. I've never got to... Well, I've been here since February and I've hardly made a dint, truthfully, hardly made a dint in my bottle. Mm. So I can then pop that on to there like that, just brushing off any little bits. Now, that is perfect because we can wipe off any of those little bits that come through and that is the best glue that i can find to make on there now if i wanted to add an embellishment let's see what embellishments i've got i've got a little flower here so let me just grab a little paper flower just on here so if i wanted to put this on here as we said this is a tacky glue let's just put this on here when we put that on there like that that's not very tacky at the moment if i put my finger on that it's not tacky so all i'm going to do is spread it out a little bit try and make it thin there we go and that can you see is going from white to opaque 
It's a bit like when we clear. use the glue pens, mm -hmm. you know, when they come out blue and then you, you use them when they're clear. Yes. So let that just go a little bit tacky. Give it a blow. Just to get that. And you can see it's getting tackier and tackier. And that then I can add my flour and that will then stick onto there once it's gone tacky. So Brilliant. just so give that a good squeeze so that the glue does there. And then that now will stick on to there and that will go really really quickly the other one that you might do do one more with the um, tacky glue is with your box lid so I've made a box here let's just come on to here so I wouldn't use my all-purpose for this what I would be doing is I would just be shaping this just like here and then I would put my let's come in with this the little one I would then put my glue on here now as we said it's water-based so if it gets onto your skin it's I would say it's not going to do you any harm so what we can do is we can then spread that out all over here so because what, what we want to do is get it nice and sticky so I'm not rushing to put the box together I'm just leaving it to get nice and sticky and once that just give that a second so you could be doing whatever else you needed to be doing. We could do that. And so then, let's just see. Oh, you can see. Can you see? It's just starting to go tacky. Once it started to go sticky or tacky, I can then fold up. What you might want to do then is, oh, I've got some here. It's just put a little clip on. These are just sewing clips. Put a little clip on, just on there, just to hold it while it dries and that will be really really strong on there to that like that give that five minutes just to grab and then you can take your tap your i won't give it five minutes but you know what I mean? you can take your pegs off and then you've got a perfect box lid so yes. that's the sort of difference between your um your all-purpose and your tacky. So your, all, your tacky is going to be for your detail or sticking on your embellishments or it's going to be for on your, whoops, there we go, your coated cardstock. Where is your kalal? And if you look at this, this now is going really quite hard, quite firm. It's adding in extra layers. Now, I might, might pick the wrong paper here, but I can see, can you see that that is just starting to bubble a little bit and buckle? There you are. Can you see there, look? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can. And it's doing it on this side. Yes, and that is can, what yeah. happens when, if you use too much of your tacky glue. Your tacky glue isn't the right glue for this. Your all-purpose, if you look at the two together, this has stayed low. You can really see it there, can't you? This has stayed lovely and flat. It's added strength to your mats and layers. Um, whereas this has started to soak into the card. It didn't so much on this one because it was the um, coated cardstock. It worked really well on there. But on two uncoated cardstocks, it just starts to buckle it a little bit. So pick the right one for the right job. So all purpose for your regular mats and layers, tacky for your coated, and then all purpose for your embellishments like that brilliant loads of you getting in touch with us about which glues you're using the most do let me know uh, betsy is saying i use kalal glue almost exclusively i just love being able to move it around uh, we've also got eleanor in saying i love using the 3d glue I use um, them more than I do foam pads because I think the 3D glue is easier to use. That's really interesting. And, and it does give you more dimension as well, doesn't it, Eleanor? You know, you kind of get a bit more freedom with it, don't you? Um, do let us know what is, if, let's say, Desert Island two what are your desert island two glues okay that will definitely keep you going i've had a question in as well from panda and do send your questions in that's kind of what these types of things are all about um whilst we've got a mini glue school going on before we go into our machines and everything else panda is asking i'm gluing onto an embossed piece of card which i have brushed an ink pad over i have used kalal all purpose 
Is that strong enough? I'm making a baby box with an animal theme. That sounds amazing. I would love to see a picture of that when it's done. I um, think that'd be perfect because the kalal will, it's liquid enough that it'll get, it because it's been embossed, it'll go into all the grooves, but it's not going to, you know, because you might have to use a little bit more to go into the embossed. You know, if it was flat, you could just almost skim it across. Because it's embossed, you're going to have to go between the grooves. So, but it's not going to buckle your cardstock. As long as you're not using a coated cardstock, which it doesn't sound like you are because you've embossed it and you've inked it. So I'd be very surprised if you were using a coated one because you wouldn't be doing that. And because it's a box, as I was showing you here, not that one, there we go, that one. It's also going to make it a little bit harder. So that means that when you come to use it as a box, it's going to have a little bit more strength to it. So I would say your Kalal would be perfect. Without uh, seeing it, that feels to me like the right one to use. Perfect. Panda crafts, I hope that helps. And also, panda crafts, are you putting a panda on the animal theme box? I would really like to know. <laughs> um, surely you have to. Suzanne is saying, this is very useful because I'm always unsure which adhesive to use. Oh, I'm glad that this is helpful for you. We have got more um, glues to bring to you. I want to talk to you whilst we're um, about the all-purpose, which is currently on your screen. Just as a reminder, 100 mil on those, and you are getting three of them. So 300 mil in total. So you know the big bottle that um, Corinne's using? It's even more than that. Let's go on next to the red liner tape, shall we? I want to start off by talking about the daintiest one. Um, we have got a three mil here for you. So the red liner tape, just in case you are new, it looks red, but actually it's not when you use it. Our red liner tape is, for all intents and purposes, a super duper ultra clear double sided adhesive tape that will give you a permanent bond to well, pretty much anything you set your mind to, right? Yeah, it's really strong. The, uh, so you sometimes hear um, red liner tape called super sticky. A lot of people call it super sticky because that's what it is. A lot of people like to use it to make their boxes, and we're going to just make put a, a, a craft card box. Craft card's quite hard to stick together because it's got very fibrous, so it just sort of not repel glues, but it's not always that easy. Let me show you this. This is some black card, and I've just stuck different things on. So five strips of red liner tape all exactly the same and then I've attached glitter I put ribbon I've used chunky glitter I put gilding flakes and I've put foil on so now the other thing you can do is you can put embossing powders over them as long as you're careful you not to melt the glue you can then set your embossing powder over the top as well and I'll show you how easy it is to use so I've just put some pieces of um, red liner on my cardstock and then all I'm going to do is take them off now people say how do you cope with the static and I've talked to a lot of people and a lot of people some people say have a piece of kitchen roll at the side of you and then pop that and then it'll stick to the kitchen roll do you see how that's stuck to the kitchen roll mm -hmm. that is brilliant the other way I do is I sometimes find a little piece of scrap card out of my bin and then when I've peeled it off I just press it over like that so I'll peel off like that and then touch it like that oh I and get you can you see it's yeah. just going to hold it there so let's go with the first one let's go with oh i didn't get myself a piece of scrap of paper so let's show you can you see where that stuck where my red liner was there that end piece yeah. we can then just come in with our glitter got a little pot this is just regular glitter there's nothing no fancy glitter here Ooh. And the most, oh, the most difficult bit of this is getting the lid off my glitter. Now, you've noticed I've only taken one piece of red liner off at a time. Make sure, don't take them all off, otherwise it's just going to stick to everything. So there we go. How about just like that? Doesn't that look beautiful? And that's okay. now permanently stuck on there. So if you want to put a border around your project, red liner tape, it's, in a way, for me, it's better than doing it with glue because it'll be straight. You haven't got to worry about wonky lines yeah so then the next one is i might want to go in with my chunky glitter have you seen this this chunky glitter one of oh, sarah's love i it, love yeah. this gorgeous so again i'm just going to take off my red liner attach it to there put this over here and then i'm just going to sprinkle on there and then it's far more than i need i just give it a nice little pat because remember this is really dimensional just give it a little pat and then pop it down 
there that's just caught under glitzy there we go let's get rid of those little bits there we go and look at that look at how that now has stuck to there isn't that lovely fantastic i love the, look at the colors in that glitter oh i know the fab aren't it's they it's brilliant isn't it yeah <laughs> Since I've been had that, I use it all the time. Really Go really do. nicely with the uh, dragonfly. You know the Sarah signature dragonfly. Yeah. Really nicely with that. Okay, so let's have a go next at foil. So you know, you know your foils. Now I tend to try and find my cold foils, but I have been told it works really well on your hot foils as well. So let's just pop a couple of pieces. Try not to be wasteful. Let's get a couple of pieces of foil on here. There we go. Pop like that, and then all I'm going to do is pop that across there, press it down. Oh, I can see it going already. And then let's get the next one, overlap them so there'll be no gaps. Pop that down, and then look at this. When I lift that up, oh, I missed a bit there. Go back in. There we go. Look at that. So if you miss a bit, it's not a problem. Just go back in and retouch it up. So can you see that now, look? The yes. foil. Doesn't that look amazing? So which other ones were we going to do? We were going to, oh, gilding flakes. I love gilding flakes on this. So let me get this. This is where I get a bit messy. Now this is my, my um, pot of leftovers. You know when you're doing gilding flakes and you sometimes use more than one colour? I always put all the mix, mixed up pieces back into a single pot. Mm -hmm. So this has got reds, it's got and golds and bronzes and silver in there. So I can pop this onto here. So yes, you can use your um, gilding flake adhesive, but why not use red liner tape? If what you wear you want to put it is a nice straight line. I've gone a bit heavy handed here, haven't I? But it's not a problem. We can put this on there, I'm just pressing that down. Then I'm just going to get my little... Now the great thing is, look at this, the gilding flakes aren't sticking to any other bits. No. They're only sticking where that red liner was. There we go. How about that? Perfect way to apply quite neatly. And you can get such crisp, look at that. Look how crisp an edge you can get with your gilding flakes. Doesn't that look perfect? Definitely. So another one, another thing that's brilliant. So we've not talked yet about what you can stick together. We're just thinking about what I can attach to things. And then the other thing I've got is I've got a little piece of a stringy ribbon and I can pop that on here and then I can pop that onto there and then we can just give it a little bit of a trim. So just think about your embellishments, your ribbons and all of that. That's just five things that I found I can attach to a piece of card with red liner tape. You can do a lot, lot more, but I just thought those were really pretty ways that you might want to embellish your projects. Completely and absolutely. And all with uh, some of your crafting loves, glitters, etc and with your red liner tape three mil currently on the screen yes you do get a pack of three i've also got six mil for you and i'll just show you those side by side so that you can see the thickness variation within them and then i've also got your 12 mil so 12 mil we're talking just over a centimeter um, and that is a sturdy number so this one is also available currently on your screen right now so it's nice to have a range um, if there was just one that you were going to get maybe have a little think are you more into doing dainty designs or are you more bigger and bolder generally have a little look a lot of you going for the 12 mil now actually really unusual to have the 12 mil just by itself normally it's within kind of a bundle isn't it so it's great to have it almost with a bundle of itself so that is the 12 mil for you if you do want to seize the moment on that one it is now on your screen so we have got the opportunity to add lovely glitter and detail but also it is good for construction it certainly it? is because it sticks straight away you what the great thing is is once you put it on you know that everything is going to stick brilliantly so that some people might say that's good some people might say that's bad i've actually stuck i stuck a three mil piece on and thought oh, actually i want two on so you could have i could have just used a six mil piece if i want so i've just put it down onto the box pressed it down because it's a craft card i'm just going to press it down a little bit 
and then I can lift up the edges. So what I can then do is take my second element of my box and then I can pop those together and you can always fold them over. It's not going to get in the way. It's not going to, you know, seep or anything like that. So it's absolutely perfect. Then I'm going to take the second side of my box. Let's do it. Let's fold it just there because that's the easiest way to do it. Make sure that's burnished down. Always, some people say they have trouble lifting up the tape, for the, you know, the backing for red liner. That's usually because it's not pressed down hard enough. So if I then fold this one over, let's go to there. That will then fold over like that. Now, I could be then using um, my red liner on the bottom. I'm actually going to come in with my cloud glue because I think that's going to be the best to use here. So let's just do two to begin with. So I'm going to pop one on first. Then I'm going to fold down the second one just there. I can fold over the third one and then I can pop my glue on there and then pop that on. Because remember what we were saying about how the collal goes quite hard and adds strength? So the place I want on my box to add the strength is the base. So then I, all I need to do is press in the sides of my box just like that. Remember, collal glue would be dry in 20 minutes. The glue on the sides is already dry. Let's just make sure all of those are pressing in. I did shape them before I put them together. And then we can bring this together. Come on, sides in, sides in. And that's going to go, you can get the gist. There we go, sides in like that. And I'm just going to trap it with that one. Typical, it doesn't want to, come on. Ah, maybe it's because I've not got that side in. Let's press that one in too. They were all shaped. There, we're coming in now. Coming, coming in fine. Pop it in there. These are just your trinket boxes. So, aha, that was why it wasn't doing it, because they weren't all pushed in. There we go. Push, ah, you see, now you can see it's forming. Pop this four together. Pop that over. Pop that one over just like that. There we are. Bring that corner. There we go. And then that one's going in. I knew it was going to go. And that one is going on there. So the question is, what glue should I be using? And it's a different glue for a different purpose. Hey, presto. So I've used my clal on the base because I want extra strength. And I've used my red liner on the sides because I want it to grab instantly. I couldn't have... You saw I had to use a little bit of force for that because of it was resisting. If I'd have used a wet glue, that would have been trying to separate come out, part, wouldn't it? Yeah. It would have been trying to part. Yeah. Whereas I know I can come in there straight away with my, um, push it together really easily because I've used the right adhesive. Fabulous. Uh, and speaking of the right adhesive, more questions coming through. Uh, Lisa T has said, with the red liner tape, when you're yes. using the glitters, glitters uh, does the sticky not come through the glitter? Does, sorry. Lisa T is asking, when you're using the red liner tape with the glitters and gilding flakes, does the sticky not come through? No, nope. let me show you where's my piece gone here. Because I've, I've completely covered it, there is no red line. Look, if I show you, oh, that one's a little bit there, but no, it isn't sticking through at all. You can see it's just coming through, absolutely doesn't come through. As long as you put enough on to cover it, you see I completely coated the area and you can see, um, you know it's going to be absolutely fine. That's perfect. Another one in from Christine. I'm um, saying, which glue is the best for sticking mirror card to card? Also, which glue would you use on top of mirror card? Right. The, so just like, oh, have I got a piece of mirror card here? I haven't got a piece of mirror card here. You remember we stuck this one down? So imagine this, this was um, glitter card, but that could be mirror card. So the card I stuck to the mirror card, I would use my all-purpose because it's water-based and it's not going to uh, impact the the um, the coating. Okay. If I wanted to now stick that onto a piece of 
to my card front, that is just regular card on the back. So that means I could then come in with my collal glue and just treat it as regular card to stick to there. As long as the back of your Miri card is plain cardstock, treat it as plain cardstock and use your collal. The top of your Miri is definitely your tacky glue. That's great stuff. Thank you so much. So now you know the fabulousness that is red liner tape, your 12 mils on screen, three packs of that. We have also got 3D foam set. Now this is a big set uh, that you've got within here. So I've got your small um, already pre-cut um, pads here, 230 in each of these two, as you can see. But not only have I got that, we have got for you roly foam and we've got your A4 sheets, well, around A4 sheets. And in the A4 sheets, you are getting one millimeter thickness, two millimeter thickness, and three millimeter thickness sheets in there. So again, it's about versatility, it's about the range. Lovely 15% discount on these, but don't forget, I've got an extra 10% discount code for you today. Oh yeah, today and today only though. It is CTV10, and it is one per person. It's our showtime surprise today, but it is today and today only. So do seize the moment, because, um, when you're adding all of these treats and things that, well, they are essentials, they're our core ingredients and our core uh, needs, then we have the opportunity to get that extra 10% off as well. So 15% off on all of that for you and you can get the extra 10 as well. So foam, talk to us about it. Right, foam pads absolutely would not be without them. We've talked about your 3D glue and I could make up a flower here with my foam pads. Now I thought I had one. There we go. This one, this foot one here, as you can see, can you see the foam pads have mm. been used in there. Now that means if I wanted to make up this flower and put it in the post today, then I'd make it with my foam pads rather than my 3D glue because this one is still squishable because we've only just made it. So, you mm. know, I couldn't actually gift this one today. Yes. This one I can because I've used my foam pads. It's given me a much dimension. The only thing is I tend to find that if you use the foam pads, you don't always put as much shape in because um, they're all uniform in size. You know, whereas the glue works through all the different heights. Yeah. But I think that looks absolutely gorgeous. It's really, really robust. Definitely. You know it's not going to come apart. So it's perfect for that. It's also perfect, as you saw when we did this card in the earlier show. And if we look down there, you can see I put my mats and layers on with foam tape there, um, foam pads there. And when I was creating my stopper, uh, yes. I put it there. Because it's stuck down, I can put my card up, I can put quite a bit of pressure, and I know that's not going to move. Now, you liked what we did with the red liner tape, but I can do very similar, I think, I believe, with my foam pad. So I can pop a foam pad on here, I can take the top off. Great thing about uh, Crafters Companion foam pads is they are absolutely um, really easy to release. So where's my piece of scrappy card? What you could do if you wanted to is you could take this and then you could apply, you know, any of your um, glitters. That one doesn't show up that much. Let me see if I've got a, oh look, I've got some purple glitter. Let's have a go. Let's do another one with a little bit of purple glitter so it really shows up so that you can see it. Let's put, an, let's put a larger one on. And, and it's great to have all the different sizes. The different sizes really, really are quite useful because they're going to um, really, oh, there we go. They're going to allow you that control. So we can put the gold, the gold, it's purple even. <laughs> but we can put that on and then we can pop that back into there. And look at that. That's not sticky anymore. That's another way to decorate, get all the bits off, obviously. But you could decorate your cards up like that. And I've made a right mess. Now, the other thing you might want to do is you might want to do just like we did before with your mats and layers. So I've got two pieces of green card just here. So when I put these together, let's have a look. I've got some um, foam roll here. So let's put my foam roll on for this one because it's just going to look better. So we could put a couple of pieces just like that. 
Then again, we can take off our backing. Just press that down, come on. I've got glitter everywhere. There we are. Straight off the backing. Again, if ever of you take, whether it's finger lift, whether it's foam pads, whether it's red liner, and it's not feeling like the backing's coming off, always just make sure you've pressed it down really, really hard. So when we put that on there, turn it over, and I can put my, these are just the same size, or more or less. I just cut a piece of card in hard. We can pop that on there. Now, you can see your foam tape down the side. Can you see? Mm. Just down there. So what you can also do is you can go in with a pen. I should have done that nearer to the edge. And you can then just colour up your foam tape, the edge of your foam tape. If I'd have done it closer to the edge and thought it through, there we go. We can then just run our tape, our pens. Can you see? Yes. So now our foam pads are virtually invisible because we've coloured them. Can you see? You can hardly yeah. see. They just blend in. So they're perfect for your mats and layers, but they will also colour up so that you can add, you know, really, really hide them. So mats and layers like that, if it's going to be a stopper or you want to raise something quite proud, or just think about, you know, using them to embellish your projects as well. Brilliant, absolutely love it. Um, loads of you um, enjoying learning about this. Laura says, oh, I never thought about using red liner tape for gilding flakes. Hey, we'll give it a go. Let us know how it goes. Um, a Panda has gotten in touch, and thankfully, Panda Crafts, who is doing the um, baby box animal theme, there is a panda on the panda box, and I am very, very glad. Um, glad of it. I hope it goes really, really well. We've got loads of you in, people just joining us now. Mary Pat's back in. Hey, Mary Pat, saying, um, good morning, everyone from sunny Montana. Um, Dieta's in as well, saying, it's beautiful this morning in Southern California. Uh, Brenda's in, saying, I'm watching from Pennsylvania. Um, oh, let us know what you have if you were to look out your window now i'd like to know what you're looking at please what can you see from the window you are closest to now do message in because i do like the idea of sort of montana and 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 pennsylvania but i can't kind of imagine what the landscape would no. be like or anything do you know what i mean so do message in um so we have got the 3d phone for you on your screen right now have you stocked up on everything you need have you used your 10 percent off discount code yet if not i'm going to give you a couple of minutes to do so and whilst we do let's learn how we can join our free club inspire Welcome to Club Inspire, the crafters companion community where you can feed your crafty obsession. Join our fantastic loyalty club today and receive 20% of your first order. We'll also give you 250 points to help get you started. Other benefits of joining Club Inspire include exclusive special offers and discounts for Club Inspire members only, exclusive sneak peek previews of brand new product launches, and of course, the Club Inspire community group on Facebook, where you can access exclusive content such as downloads, offers and inspiration. And of course, you can chat and share your makes with other members. You'll receive one point for every pound, dollar or euro you spend. And the more points you receive, the more benefits you'll unlock. So what are you waiting for? Sign up, join the club and start rewarding yourself today. Quick buy, all your crafty must-haves in a flash. Put away your tape measure and fabric scissors. The Threaders Fabric Cutter offers accuracy and precision with every cut. This handy tool slices through fabric in a guillotine style. Its ergonomic design features a comfortable and protective handle, so it's safe and easy to use whether you're right or left-handed. Its 45mm rotary blade will cut up to six layers of fabric at a time, so your sewing, quilting and upholstery project times are cut down to size. It's equipped with a measuring guide in metric and imperial for a perfectly accurate cut every time. The built-in grid ruler has 30 degree, 45 degree and 60 degree angle lines, so you can cut fabric on any angle including the bias. Quick buy. 
all your crafty must-haves in a flash. Welcome to Crafters TV. With more than 35 hours of live shows each week, it's your home for all things craft. We shine the spotlight on new and innovative crafting products with live tutorials and demonstrations. Join our family of craft experts where fun happens every day. Quiet. Ah, oh, the neighbors. I'm all out of Zoom. I'm so lost without you. I'm not, I'm not singing. I'm not singing. Lisa, if you email in, don't send a picture of your air fryer. Make sure it's something creative. Get creative and craft along. With our amazing deals, your next craft project is just a click away. Tune in live seven days a week, or you can watch us on Catch Up at CraftersCompanion.com, Facebook, or our YouTube channels. You can chat to us, craft along, and meet new friends by joining our online crafting community. You entertain us. You give us a community to talk, you know, in the chat. That wouldn't happen without you guys. It's like, um, Crafters Companion is magical. There's magic here. Joy, there's not a dry eye in the studio here. <laughs> Debbie's welling up. I'm welling up. There's a show for every type of crafter, from first-time dabblers to full-time makers. Crafters TV. Create every day. Oh, hey up. You lot don't enough paint a nice picture. Oh, okay, so... Mary Pat, I look out of my window and see sunshine and majestic mountains. <sighs> wow, uh, Mary Rio is saying, trees blowing in the breeze and sunshine are very comfortable. 61 Fahrenheit here in Maine. <sighs> that is nice. Uh, Samantha saying, good morning from sunny, hot central Illinois. Sounds gorgeous. I look out our window, it's just a car park. Car park out there. It's lovely around Newton Acliffe though. Oh yeah, 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 very nice. Yeah, very nice. Um, it's lovely to be with you today. Hi, how are you? It's really nice to be with you. We have got absolutely loads of treats on show for you. We've just been through a glue school, which of course you can watch back at your leisure once our show has finished. But now that you've joined us just at the right time, if you want discounts of around 10% plus an extra 10% because I've got a special code for you on our must have favorite items. It is, oh, it's like I was playing them then. Da -da, under the sea, da -da, da -da. Gemini die cream machines. We have got for you. Even my alternates confuses me sometimes. I never quite know what I'm going to do. Um, I am going to bring to you a selection of your Gemini machines. Let's get started, shall we, with the Pro. So the Pro is our big, beautiful 12 by 12 cutting plate spectacular today. If you're platinum and you use the discount code, First time we think ever, 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 ever under 300 pounds, like lowest ever price, like lowest ever price on this. It is UK only. If you do want to seize the moment, now is your time to seize. So seize away. I've also got for you the OG or original Gemini, if you will. This is our Gemini and the, um, the, the embossing machine. It cuts, it embosses, it does so much. It is only UK again. Saving yourself £18, don't mind if I do. And get that 10% discount code. It is CTV10 to get 10% off. You can only use it today. Next up, I've got for you the Junior, and we have got for you US only on this one today. If you are platinum, it is less than $150. Dollars, which is always lovely. Today you are getting it with again 10% discount code. Use that on top of our discounts. I've got the Go for you next. Now this is one that you can take with you. You can you can um, use your Gemini on the Go. It is an electrical machine, and you can use it by plugging it into things like your mobile battery packs and stuff. Then I've got for you the MIDI in here as well. This is your manual die cutting machine, six by twelve inches. The uh, plate board on that one. Again discounted to day uh, less than 65 pounds and then finally I've got for you the mini small but powerful and today it is incredibly 21.59 if you're a platinum great opportunity for you to seize the moment and 
if you do want to treat yourself to some other goodies, I have got for you our scissors. And it's not just any old scissors, it is our CTV scissors. And you're getting three sizes. So it is um, kind of filling all of your crafting needs, whether you're going to be creating something big and bold and you need, you know, a nice straight, even cut each time with your large scissors, or you're going to really, really dainty, dainty pieces, those tiny little areas you just need to snip into. You've got those ones as well. They're actually freebie today, which is always nice. So I've got those for you. Again, you have got the uh, non-stick coating, but also we've got the coating on it that means that they don't sort of rust or corrode really easy because it is resistant really wonderful once you use these scissors you won't look at any other scissors in the same way again you'll become a bit of a scissor snob there i've said it um you most certainly will but at that deal again so worth it with that free pair of scissors within there okie pokely we're back in chatting about the gemini this go on i can say we certainly are That's we all I certainly say. are we certainly are this is a really special bit of kit, isn't it? It really is. So I think it's about six years old is the Gemini now. And it is it was the best machine on the market when it was brought out, and it is still the best machine on the market. Um, it was designed to be future proofed. So when this machine came out, we didn't have double-sided dies, didn't exist. They exist now, there we go, you see the double-sided dies, and the Gemini will still cut them. So a completely different concept has occurred, but we still have a way to use them in the Gemini. And that's what I love. It's not a case of, oh, we're going to bring you a new set of dies or a new concept, or you're going to need a new machine. No, you're going to be able to still use the same machine. So when you get your machine, you get some dies and embossing folders, I believe, with them, don't you, so that you can get going. So you're going to get a little bundle straight away. That's right. But you're also going to get all of your plates you're going to get all six plates here so I've got two cutting plates I've got a rubber embossing mat I've got a metal shim I've got a clear plastic shim and I've got a magnetic shim so that's a metal shim that's a magnetic shim they are different whereas you can cut into your metal shim don't cut into your magnetic shim otherwise you're going to make yourself some very nice fridge magnets and you won't be the first person to have done it because at some point we have all done that so if you want to do some die cutting the easiest thing to do we're going to take out remove our metal and our magnetic we're going to pop those over there now i'm going to go through the plate combination but don't worry you don't have to take notes because when you get your machine you're going to get your little user guide or manual and in there it's going to tell you how to um to, to use them so you're not going to have to worry at all now what i've done and this sits in my craft bag the 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 four main ones I find is 3D embossing folders, regular embossing folders, cut and emboss folder and a deep dish because I know how to do my regular dies. So those are the other ones that I might tend to forget about if I've not done one for a little while. So let's have a look. So we've got some lovely Miri card. Let's just get a regular die. So this is not a particularly complicated um, die, but it's going to work brilliantly. So we can put that on there. Then I'm going to pop my first going to put my magnetic shim on then I'm going to put my clear and then I'm going to put my other cutting plate on now you can put it in that way up so that if you remember the die was at the bottom so it's cutting down or you can flip it around so that the die is cutting up some people feel that they like it with the die as close to the top rollers as possible but you know what with the Gemini I don't think it really matters it really doesn't matter it's going to cut there are going to be absolutely no issues with it cutting and if I take this out, then you can see, perfect, it's cut it beautifully. It's given me that beveled edge all the way around the outside and that has cut beautifully, absolutely gorgeous. So that's a regular, um, regular die cutting. So what else might you want to do? So if you want to do something like your deep dish die. So I think I want to cut through some leather and this is real leather so I'm going to try this with hmm, no I'm going to go straight in with my um, with my magnet with my cutting shim I'm going to take out my metal uh, my magnetic um, shim because this di this 
die, can't get the words out, is much mm. thicker than my regular die. So I'm going to take that out, but I am going to bring in my metal cutting plate. And this works because we were effectively cutting metal on metal. You know, like scissors? Scissors cut because it's metal on metal. This is going to work because it's going to be metal on metal. So what I'm going to do, so I've got my cutting plate, I've got my metal um, shim, my leather. This is leather, it's not a faux leather. I'm going to put my die on the top and then I'm going to cut. Now, I'm doing this through my Gemini, my, as you called it, the OG. Do you know what? I had to stand there this morning and I was like, OG, OG, what OG? And it was ages. You just met original Gemini, didn't you? Yeah. And, but it, I, was, I oh. must have been half asleep, John, oh. because I was stood here for ages thinking, what is the OG? You oh. Need, oh, that just moves slightly, but never mind. There you go. But you can see how that has cut through thick leather without any, let me come over a little That's bit, great. any issues whatsoever. Brilliant. So, yes, yeah, just introduce your magnetic shim. Now, it's called Gemini for a reason. It's called a Gemini because it's a cutting and embossing machine. So let's have a look. Let's find, I'm going to use this one because I like this one, a regular embossing folder. Let's see if I've got a piece of cardstock. Ooh, let's see, let's see. I'm going to grab a piece here. Right, so I've got a piece of Centura Pearl. This is why you also need to think today about getting your um, guillotine. That was a word. That was a, yeah, really, com that. That was a really complicated word, wasn't it? <laughs> now, this is the largest one, and it will cut up to 12 by 12 quite comfortably i think it'll cut i think it'll cut 13 by 13 but there we go so we can cut through here there we go there we are now just to show you this guillotine will shave off the tiniest tiniest pieces if you need to look at that i can i can reduce it by minuscule pieces and still have a gorgeous smooth edge it is an amazing machine and really really brilliant cutting machine so now I have got my embossing folder I've got my cardstock I'm going to pop it into my um, embossing folder so a regular embossing folder it is my cutting plate my embossing folder and my cutting plate nothing else I don't need to include anything else in there and we can run that through now we also have hmm, should we do a cut and emboss or a 3d i did have a 3d embossing folder which is there which would you prefer a cut and emboss or a 3d next hmm, a 3D. 3d okay look at that Ooh. can you see isn't that amazing? Lush. Brilliant. Okay, you said 3D. So, 3D. So, if we compare the two side by side, you can see that this 3D embossing folder is significantly thicker than your 2D one because we're adding in an extra layer of emboss. So, what I'm going to do, let's use the red cardstock again. Let's go do it the right way around. Take this and then we can pop that on. Now, if you remember the 2D, I had the two cutting plates. I've gone a thicker folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go in with my plastic plate, my plastic shim and my cutting plate. Normally, we always say, make sure you've got a cutting plate on the outside. The order of the plates on the inside doesn't usually make a lot of difference as so long as you've got a solid cutting plate on the outside. The 3D embossing folder is one time where we don't use that rule Oh, I have done it upside down. And uh, we've, you can actually use a plastic shim. But look at that. How can you see all the different layers? That was a side of actually deboss. I think that looks really nice because you've got different layers of the deboss as well. Yeah. Now I'm going to show you something else as well. So, oops, throwing those away. You can also use your stencils in your die cutting machine. You think, but I've not got anything to cut. So watch this. So what we can do is we can take our plate, we can take our embossing mat and put that on. I'm going to put my cardstock on. Then I'm going to put my stencil. Then I'm going to put my plastic shim on. 
and then I'm going to put my cutting plate on and then I'm going to run that through. While that runs through, I'm going to grab an ink pad, any ink pad. There you go, I've just put purple. So let's see if I can find a purpley dauber. It's not too, too bad. There we go. Now I'm going to catch that because there's nothing at the end of it, so there's nothing to hold it. So let me just grab a dauber. Oh, there we go. There we are, right. And then I can open this out. And what you can see, can you, can you see that embossing? Just yeah. about, but I'll make yeah. it look even, I'll bring it up so that you can see it even more. Let's just get some ink on here. And then we can run that through here. There we go. Let's run that all the way through. And it's going to really make that emboss pop. I can really feel yeah. it as I'm going across. Now, I'm not going to mm. do my um, stencil any harm whatsoever because stencils are meant to be inked. So it'll just wipe clean. But then, mm. now, can you see where that is, where that is raised? If I turn it over on the other side, I've got a deboss. And on that side, I've got a beautiful emboss. So all your stencils, and we had um, done baby stencils on the other day. I was doing the show last Wednesday, and they were extra thick stencils. So try embossing with one of those, and that would look beautiful as well. Great. So that's another way you can emboss with your Gemini. Love it. Um, we have had quite a few questions in actually, oh, which I'll sort of throw at you because you might be able to um, incorporate some of these. So Heidi's asking, um, could I see a glitter card cut with an intricate die? And then we've also had Anne asking, what would happen if you ran a regular die through with just the embossing configuration without cutting it first? Would it in simply emboss the die? Uh, should we have a... We, it might. So what she's saying is, take my die. Let's have a look. So let's go. Let's go with one of our interlaced dies that I've got behind here. So let's pop this onto here. So we've got our interlaced bird. Let's grab a piece of card and we'll cut that. Oh, I'm going to get a piece of craft card because that will look nice. Let me just cut that down a little bit. Let's just cut that in half. There we go. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put my cardstock down. I'm going to put my um, die on top. And then we're going to pop the plate. So these are the embossing configuration. So there we go. So all we've done is we've not put our magnetic shim in. So we've got our rubber um, embossing mat in and no um, shim. So let's have a look. now. Craig, I did a show with Craig and he said he knows of no configuration where you use the rubber mat and the magnetic shim at the same time. And I can't disagree with him because I don't know. No, it's cut it. Well, it's partially cut it. The deeper ones, it's cut. And on the shallower ones, it's stayed. That's actually still in. It's not a full cut. So that deeper blade that I have around the outside Yes, it still cut them, but on the detailed ones, it's really, really embossed, but not actually cut it through. That's so wonderful. Go. Yeah, it's really, really useful. Thank you very much, Annie. I hope that helps. I think you. another way you could actually get a bit of emboss. Should we try one more configuration? Go on, so I've got another piece of card. Let's try this now, because she only wants to emboss. I'm going to take out my plastic shim and I'm going to put in my metal shim. I know Craig says you never use them, but let's just try this together because we're not doing something that you're really meant to do now this might not work this might do we should see what this does just trying to answer that question and see see how we how we go so just play you know as long as you don't make it too thick oh now look at that that's not cut through at all no that has beautifully can yeah. you see yeah embossed into there so craig I stand I'm correcting you. You can use your rubber and your magnetic when you want to use your die to emboss. That looks really pretty, doesn't it? Really yeah. pretty. There we go. Thank you for that. Um, loads of you absolutely adoring these. Rosalind saying, before I purchased the Gemini, I had to use my manual machines 
too cut thick card, glitter and cork. It was challenging cranking through all of those. The Gemini cuts it out in one yes. pass. Yeah. If you put something in that's too thick, like I did with virtually the very first demo I did this morning, if you put something in that's too thick, all that will happen is the Gemini will pop it back out. Yeah. Not a problem. No. Nope. So I believe we're now going to look at the Gemini Junior. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to same power. We haven't even talked about this. This is the Gemini machine is so easy to set up. We haven't even mentioned this. One cable in the back, an on-off switch. That's like your power on-off, and then you've got your function on-off up here. So all I'm going to do, turn it off take up my power cable so if you do have more than one machine and you don't have time to put them always together I can use the same cable in my junior as I used in my Gemini and I can then oh, turn the power on there we go turn it on and I'm ready to go so I just wanted to interrupt you on that bit just so that everybody knows that the same power cable works in both of them. Brilliant. It is your junior that we're talking about now. I will let you know this is US only that we've got on your screen right now. Um, you are today getting a 10% discount, but don't forget, we've got the special code for you today, CTV10. Going to give you an extra 10% off. It is just one per person, and I really do need to be clear about this. It is today only. So well worth treating yourself to it whilst you can. We have got the fabulous Junior available to you. And this is one that Craig generally uses, isn't it? Craig generally in, uh, has uh, the, the Junior out. That's kind of his go-to. So it is, um, you know, it is powerful enough. And the thing that I would also mention about this one, if you have been um and R in, do I, don't I, which one should I get? Um, uh, I think it was Sandra put it beautifully earlier, um, who's, who's one of our fabulous CTV family members. Um, She's just said that actually for her, kind of get the best that is for your size and your kind of bank balance. Get the biggest one that you can, you know, when it comes to but bearing in mind your space and, and what you've got in your account right now because you can always go smaller, but you can't go larger, can you? So have a little think about that. The junior is here and although it is daintier, it's still got all the power. Oh, it's still exactly the same mechanism inside. It's exactly the same plate. So I've got my two cutting plates, my magnet and my plastic. I've also got my embossing uh, mat and my metal shim as well. So I've got exactly, exactly the same plates. So whatever you would have done with the original, we're going to do with the junior. So I have now got a cut and emboss um, folder so I'm going to put my card stock in so we haven't looked at cutting emboss in this um, section now this is a five by seven so what you need to know is your plates are nine by six so they're a little bit bigger than a5 so it's not like half of an a4 it's a bit bigger so we're going to pop our um, cutting plate down then we're going to put our embossing folder then because remember it's a, um, a 3d one now let me think to myself Am I going to need as much as that? Oh, yes, it's thinner. Right, I'm going to go with my magnetic. Now, if I've got too much on here, it'll just spit it back out. So let's try putting that back in. No, that's absolutely fine. I was thinking for a minute that looked to me to be too many plates, but it wasn't. I should trust myself and know what the plates are. If it's wrong, it'll tell me and give it me back. So, cut and emboss. This could have gone through my larger machine. I put it through my smaller machine. Now, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Gorgeous. It's embossed and it's cut in what was that? 11 or 12 seconds? Seconds. Seconds, yeah. literally seconds. So I could then put that on top. Wow, emboss on top of emboss. How beautiful does that look? Great, really great. Um, we have had a question actually from Lillian, who's just said a uh, mirror card really picks up the marks from cutting plates. Is there a good way around this, please? Right, yes, really easy. And I don't have any here, but what I would be doing is, if you were concerned about it, then put a piece of copier paper. Don't go thicker than copier paper. Ooh, got a fly. Don't go, put, don't go put in a piece of your Centura Pearl in. Don't put a piece of your stamping card because you're, you're starting to shim it out a bit too much. Just put in a piece of copier paper over the top of the plate 
that is really marked. So if I was doing this, let's just say I was cutting a piece of cardstock like that, and I was going, I've got so many dies out, I've got them all out. So say I wanted to cut into there, but I didn't want this cardstock to be marked. If this was copier paper, I'd put that on, then I'd put my plates on like that. And that copier paper over the top of here would protect the rest of this from any marked plates and that's as simple as it is just copy your paper but please don't go any thicker because you're going to start adding shims and then you're going to actually start warping your cardstock that's brilliant we have had another request in and um, so Heidi oh no Heidi sorry your request was about the glitter card wasn't it um Miriam has asked if we get a chance can you show how to use a puzzle die cutting into mount board using of course the original I can. yes we'll need we, we'll do that when we get to a bigger machine because yeah yeah I will definitely do that and I've got that some of the perfect. puzzle dies down here so it's not a problem perfect perfect okay. so right, that so what else can oh let's have a look we haven't done anything on double sided dies Ooh, yet yeah. which i love so these are a new concept to me so this is a a sort of four piece but it's really clever so to make the um the gemini future proofed what we've brought out is some additional plates so if ever you get any um double sided dies you will need to pick up your double sided die plates that's a nice new set, so I'm not going to ruin that nice new set. So what you then do is you take your um, plate. So I'm going to take my regular plate. I've dropped all my normal shims out. I'm going to put one of my double-sided plates down. I'm going to put cardstock down. I'm going to pop my double-sided die down. And then I'm going to pop my second piece of card. So what this is going to do is cut both at the same time. So then my second double-sided um, plate and then my regular plate. So I've still got my two cutting plates, but I don't have either my plastic shim or my magnetic shim. I have swapped those out for my double-sided plates. And in one go, what we have now got is, look at this, it has cut through my, all of those bits pop out, look. There we go, you can just pop those out. I've cut through my black card mm -hmm. and I've, I've really challenged this with black card and craft card. I've cut through my craft card as well. They just need poking out and those then fit. I'll take that out, there we go. All these bits just pop out all the way through here. You can pop them just like that. Don't just... forget, if you do want your pokey tool, we have got one on show there for you, you today. And then what you can see, look, is these matte and layer perfect can you see how that mats and layers perfectly on top so i can yeah. just poke out a few more bits just to show you but your double-sided dies will go through all um your two gemini's and your if we do plates will we do double-sided plates for your pro i don't know i'm not sure so maybe your double-sided you're going to just use them in your your regular one and your jun junior so yes probably i'd imagine that would be about it so yeah poke all these out absolutely perfect and then you can see that then fits over there and i cut those two out two different cards one die in one pass really clever i love the double the concept of the double-sided dies yeah there we are so that was your double-sided die um what else can we have a look at um hmm, trying to think what else works oh should we have a look at some fabric that would be a good one now we could be doing this in our junior or our main one so i had some fabric just here oh, I had some. there we go i wanted this piece of fabric there we go so what i've got i've got a couple of layers of fabric now i can go through multiple layers of fabric at one time so what you can then do is i'm going to pop that onto my um mat so because i'm going through fabric i put a, i put a piece of my, I put my metal shim down and then I'm going to find a die. So I've got a nice deep dish die here. So remember, if you're using deep dish dies, we remove our magnetic shim. So I'm just going to take that one out. I'm going to put that one in and I'm going to just to offer that up here. Now, the other thing I like to do, and we've not really mentioned about this, is my junior plates will fit in my main Gemini machine. So if I can just show you before I open this out, that goes this way, all I do is turn them round that way and then it takes seconds, so, so quick. So if you want to do that, now look at that, I could have gone through so many more layers. Look at that, there isn't a thread 
pulled on there. Can you see how cleanly that has cut? Absolutely brilliant. So yeah, so you can put, cut your um, fabric as well on your, um, your junior or your main die. Perfect, Mundo. If you do want that mighty, mighty junior, then you have got the information on your screen. Already got a discount, but I have got another discount for you as well with the code CTV10. Um, you can get an extra 10% off. If you are thinking, "Wow, surely the junior can't do much more than that," check this out. So you can grab your hands on the junior right now, or if maybe, oh, I, I have, by the way, if you have just tuned back in, I uh, just thought I'd mention, hi, it's lovely to see you. Um, we have got for you, oh, it's one of the most satisfying noises in the business, that is. And um, we have also got for you today on show, the MIDI. So this is a brilliant one because we've got all the power, but you don't need any power to go to it because this is your manual die cutting machine. I just want to draw your attention to that price point again. The fact that you can get the quality of the Crafter's Companion um, uh, it cutting embossed um, wonder that is the Gemini for under £70 anyway is great. But the fact that today we're knocking it down to just $62.99 or $80.95 and you can get an extra 10% off by using our free code today, this is just taking it to the next level. And we really do love our MIDI, don't we? We certainly do. So, the, we haven't really talked, the, the crafting journey through our machines was, first of all, we had the original Gemini, and everybody loved that. And like I say, that was about six years ago. Then we brought out the Junior. So it's the same power, the same machine, just slightly smaller plates and really brilliant for go on the go i'm not totally sure which order but basically the mini and the midi sort of came next so you what you've midi oh first. i think it was the mini first was the next one and then it was the midi so what this means is we we're giving you the portability of a manual machine with the power of the gemini so you know and also the ability to still cut and emboss because it's a gemini so you need you know it's got that dual function so we need to be able to do that now this can be a left hand oh, that's my right handed or it can be a left handed machine as becky said it's got the most satisfying oh, suction noise it really is because you're so good it is now look at this the power of those those suction pads you might say why it means I can lift up my glass mat with the suction pads there and know that, and give it a little tap, it's not going to fall off. But all you need to do, rock it, 
and you break those seals. So I'm going to turn mine round because I'm right-handed, so I find it easier. Now, slightly different plate combination with this. You're going to get a, it's a folder system. Both the mini and the midi come with folders. And so you get the folder and you also get this little pink plate as well. Purple plate. It's purple, isn't it? Ba, 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 ba. Yeah. So let's have a look what we're going to do. So I've got a sentiment. I'm going to put it onto a piece of card and then I'm going to put a piece of tape on just because my card's quite narrow and then I'm going to pop it inside my plate. Now I've got four cutting plates here. I can cut into that side. I can cut into that side. I can cut, open it out and I can cut it into that side. So the longevity of your plate is double the length because you've got so much flexibility on there. I offer it up to the mouth of my machine. I don't have to think about my plate combination because I just go with the folder, with my die, run it through and that's going to go there. So you might be wanting to use, keep this on your desk and then it's there ready for whenever you need it. Take my tape off. This is Centura Pearl so it's got a coating on it but I haven't had to worry about that even though it's a manual machine. Look at that. That hasn't distorted. It hasn't... I'm going to show you this. This is cut beautifully, but... Let me get that out of there. Just look at the waist. Now, if there was not enough pressure, you'd have seen where my thank you ripped out of it because I'd have had, you know, had to rip the bits that hadn't cut. If there was too much pressure, this cardstock would have started to bow and cockle and you know put creases in it and maybe this is the piece that you want maybe that's going to be you're going to raise that up and then you're going to have the thank you as an aperture you know as an aperture through there so i need to know that this is as good condition as this piece and it is there isn't a mark on there because the pressure is absolutely spot on but that we, is what you need if you do want to seize the moment i just want to remind you our code today ctv10 um, and quite a few of you are using the code. Uh, uh, no, no shock there, I suppose. An extra ten no, percent no. off. <laughs> exactly, and that's what I keep looking at. I keep looking at these and going, well, yeah. If this started up seventy five, seventy pounds, it's now down to about forty five pounds, which is a massive discount, isn't it? Now, what you can do is you can you, this little plate here is so that you can use your embossing folder. So I would put my embossing folder with the plate through like that. But that's just a regular 2D embossing folder. If I want to do a 3D embossing folder, this is where Crafter's Companion absolutely excel themselves. They have future-proofed all of their machines so much. So now look at this. I am putting my 3D embossing folder through. I'm actually going to go backwards just to be on the safe side. I'm putting that through. Um, they future-proofed them for things that might come onto the market. So if I open that out and I, oh my goodness me, look at that, okay. wowzers. Isn't that amazing? No plates, just the embossing folder straight through the machine. I'm just, that one, I think it is brilliant. Lovely, really lovely. I've got for you so many messages coming through. Um, Beth is saying the MIDI is a great machine for portability. Agree with you there. Um, also, um, we have got uh, Sarah talking about saying, Hiya! I um, hope we're uh, all good. We are. Thanks for asking. How are you? How was your day? Um, I absolutely love my OG and my MIDI, uh, you're saying, Sarah. Um, I've also had um, Soul Jaws, is it? I've probably pronounced that completely incorrectly, so I do apologise. Um, asking, when do you use the purple shim in the MIDI? In the MIDI. Uh, hopefully that just showed it. So, in the MIDI, you get your purple shim. If I had a 2D embossing folder, a, or just a regular embossing folder, and those, let me turn it around so you can see, I would po put those through together okay. just like that. There's no cardstock in here, so it's going through nice yeah. and quickly. You just put them through like that so you can see the embossing folder and the cardstock for your 2D. Another one actually to do with folders is in from Judy. Hi Judy, you're all right. Um, Judy's asking, will the 3D embossing folder work in the Junior? Yes. Oh, well, absolutely in the junior, no problem whatsoever. So the 3D embossing folder in the junior, let me get this right, I want to make sure I tell you exactly right. So it is, where's my plates gone? I've put them all away. Right, my mm. plates are cutting plate, 3D, 
Then I go plus, no, I don't. I go magnetic shim and cutting plate. There we go. So I've just added in now. No, it's not. I'm going to get this right. Get it right, Corinne. There we go. Cutting plate, 3D embossing folder, and then my two shims, my magnetic and my plastic. I've taken out my um, second cutting plate. So if you remember, when just so that you can see the difference, if you did a regular one, you use those two together, don't you? Can you remember we did those two together to do that? That's a bit thicker. That's a bit too thick when we're coming in with the 3D. So what we've done is we've swapped these two shims for that one. And you can see that is slightly thicker than those two put together. So all we do then is we swap out the 2D, put the 3D in, and then we use those plates together. Hope it that. is all in your manual. Please yeah. don't panic. It really is in your manual. Make yourself a little swatch like I've done. Keep it in your... Um, craft bag or next to your craft t table and then you haven't even got to get the manual out every time a few more points on that if you are going to do one and keep it in your craft bag um, and you're like oh i will do that coin but i don't have a craft bag <laughs> i can change that for you today um, that, was slick. that was slick that was that was quite a good transition i'm impressed with that one um the thing that i don't like about that corin is the shock uh, that was in your voice um <laughs> actually quite good <laughs> but also another thing not to forget is if you do lose the manual that comes uh, with your machine you can um, download it off of our website as well just to let you know so that is the midi oh, so good now let's go to the mini I just want to show you these side by side and not just because I absolutely love the noise it makes uh, but because I just want to show you the difference in the size of these ones so you've got the midi and you've got the mini the mini on screen right now today if you are platinum and you are using your 10% off code you're looking at less than 20 pounds I mean, really, that's incredible. Um, so I have got for you here the wonderful Mini. And this is portability taken to the max, isn't it? It certainly is. Just so that you know, if, so that you can make that informed decision. The MIDI is nine by six. Just checking it on my mat. So that's nine, nine inches by six inches. Your Mini is six inches by three inches. So this is the one I have mine, just so if you can see, if I've got my machines at the side of me, it sits on top of my machines, just there, so that I can grab it whenever I need it. So it's there on top of my machine. It doesn't interfere with the working of that machine, but it's right at hand. So like I say, three inches by six inches. It is a folders based system, exactly the same as the um, MIDI. Oh, I have to keep thinking, breathe. Is it MIDI? Is it MIDI? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cutting, my folder. I'm going to put my die inside. Now you will be surprised at how many of your dies will go through your mini machine. We have a lot. Very often the thing that stops us putting a die through a machine is the cardstock we're cutting into. Look at that, straight out, perfect stencil. It's the cardstock rather than the actual um, die itself, because often we cut into a larger piece of cardstock. There we go. Now look at that. Hasn't that cut beautifully? Every last bit of that, I haven't had to poke anything out. The pressure in the mini is absolutely brilliant. Now you've also got, oops, I'm just, butterflies flying away you've also got your purple shim so that means if you've got any small embossing folders and unfortunately I don't have any in the studio with me today but if I have a regular 2d embossing folder that fits through there that's you know less than three by six inches I can also put that through my mini machine as well so yeah absolutely perfect absolutely so if this is the one that you want to treat yourself to or your best friend to your grandchild to whoever it might be today is a fantastic day to treat yourself especially as we've got an extra 10 percent off discount code now i did mention earlier on our craft storage cases and i have got 
two for you to choose from today. We are going to be bringing to you our floral um, design first and they are they are exactly the same it's just the design of them. So let me talk to you about the floral. We've got this lovely large reinforced zip on here which we open up and then we can see inside our bag. In our bag we have got a separate and detachable if you see um, pocket which means we can carry uh, maybe things like our extra notes or maybe even a chitty if you're doing a craft fair you can take that separately with you the large open pockets here which means whatever you do decide to pop within them that means that not only have you got a good sort of inch to um, inch and a half even um, of depth to this means you can see exactly what you're putting in there but also it means that they are easy to get to you've also got your little hanger on here too which is why i was testing the doors behind me before um but you it's um but they're not real but basically sorry plot spoiler alert Oh, I thought I was taller than I am. I thought I could reach the top of that, but I definitely can't. Um, unless I sort of get up on the sides a bit. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that's true, actually. Since I wore that puppet at the Jubilee, I am literally a bit shorter. So maybe that's the problem. Um, but yeah, you can hang this, say, onto the back of your door, or you can hang this on a shelving unit, or pop it in your, um, oh, what you call it, where you keep your clothes? Wardrobe. Wardrobe. <laughs> Sorry, airing cupboard was the first one that Johnny said. Straight in that airing cupboard. Uh, yeah, family fortunes, don't go on that. <laughs> um, yeah, your wardrobe, well, your closet in America, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you can hang that in there and you can see it all. And then once it is time to pack it up and go, you are just going to fold it all in, zip it up, and jobs are good and let's go. You've also got a pocket at the front. If you love the floral, grab the floral. If you want a little bit more of a row. How about we go cheetah? This is our purple cheetah for you today. So these are exactly the same format, as I've said, um, all our beautiful kind of branding and coloring. It's just up to you which one you get. So well worth seizing the moment because, and I do always say this, but I do believe it to be absolutely true. When you pay for storage you actually save yourself money in the long run if it's really good storage like this you'll save yourself money because you know that everything you're storing is going to be well protected and also because these are clear you can see exactly where everything is and how many times have we done this you've bought something you can't find it so you end up rebuying it with these no need to do that so treat yourself today whilst you can and they've got the 10% off whilst you're grabbing those ones do you need a guillotine if you do, I've got it on offer for you today. It is the US and the UK, it's two different deals. So uh, the US is from the US warehouse and we have got it for you now. This is your large guillotine, which means it cuts your 12 by 12 sheets. So it's a wonderful size for you to be able to work with. You've got your extendable section and your little foot. Um, that means it won't go all wobbly and you can cut really nicely and correctly each time. This is your US version on screen. It's $44.95 today or you can get the UK version which is $35.99. This is something that we um, definitely, definitely yes. need, isn't it? Yes. When I first started crafting, I had so many paper trimmers. And I would often use my craft knife with a metal ruler and you never got the same results. If you have a guillotine, you are guaranteed excellent results every single time. As Becky said, this one has got an extending arm. So this will now cut up to 13 inches and I believe this is about 13 inches as well. So, you know, it is a large cutting area. You've also got your grid on here, which is perfect for your scoring. And also, you know, you've got your blade and you've got your hand protector just here. So I showed you earlier, if I take a piece of card, so this is, I can now cut, look at this. This it is regular A4 cardstock. So a regular A4 cardstock is just over the eight inches. It's fractionally over the eight inches. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to cut off the smallest slither there. And that's cut off just my little bit of excess. So I'm going to have my card eight inches by, let's have a look, let's go by five and a half. So I'm going to cut this to 11. 
I can see because I've got, oh, let me see, sorry, there we go. So you can see I've got it to 11 just there. Now I can then straighten it up using, I'm butting it up against the top to make sure it's straight, pressing down on the handguard and lowering the handle. And look at that, an absolutely perfect, perfect cut, no feathering. So what I can then do is put it back in put it back in there and then I can get my little score tool and I can take, find the five and a half mark, score that down and then fold that over. Actually, I'm not quite, I've got a little bit of a lip. So all I need to do now is take that there and I can trim off the tiniest little bit so that I have now got the perfect card base. So this is just uh, under five and a half by eight. So if I then want to then cut a mat layer, let's go, let's go five, just go under, just under five and a quarter by seven and three quarters. Let's go to there, seven and three quarters. Now we can pop that on. Now if we look at this, does that look even? Now if I look at that, I think I need the smallest little bit up there. That's not a problem. I can put this in, I can measure up, and I can pop it out by a fraction of a millimetre. Take that out. Look at that. I've cut the perfect little piece off. Still got a straight edge. And then, there we go. I cut that so I could show you. Perfect mats and That's layers fab. now one thing that I, I showed it earlier the one thing that people often say is how do you cut really small pieces so if i want my, i've got my first mark in there if i wanted to cut a piece that was one inch i would put it to that mark i'd make sure it was straight all the way down there you can see that guide and i could cut it and that's going to give me let's push that out a one inch strip Anything less than a one inch strip is going to be hard to measure. So all you need to do, put your cardstock in that you're cutting it away from. I'm going to take it down to six and a half inches. I'm just going to cut that off. That's waste. Now, if I want to cut off another half an inch, if I want, oh, there we go. I didn't press that down properly. So if I now want to cut a half inch strip, I'm going to pop that down. So this was at six and a half. So I'm going to pop it down to six inches and I've got a half inch strip. If I want a quarter of an inch strip, I'm just going to take quarter of an inch off my um, length, and that's easy because I've got the markers, and I've got a measured quarter of an inch strip. There we go, you can see, absolutely perfect, measured all the way. And then if I wanted to do a three quarters, where am I at now? I'm at six and three quarters, so if I come down to five, there we go, I have now got, oops, under my guillotine, I have now got a three quarter inch. So I've got a three quarter inch, a half inch, and a quarter inch, all perfectly cut. Oh, there was my three quarter inch. That was a large piece. There we go. I thought that was weird. There we go. All perfectly cut using my guillotine. So, you know, you can cut small pieces. And like we say, if your mat is not quite right, you can cut off. Now, make sure you apply pressure. Don't be gentle with it because you need to apply the pressure and then your cuts will be feather free if you if you sort of go in a bit like gently can you see i feathered the edge because i've not right can you see that that edge just there yeah. i don't know if you see it's just feathered it a little bit uh -huh. that's because i didn't put enough pressure on so i press that down press down there and then i press the blade against the blade and i've got a perfect cut that's fab isn't it yeah it's a wonderful bit of kit, it really is. UK version is on your screen right now. If you do want to grab it, then you absolutely can with the 10% discount and you've got the extra 10% off as well. Loads of people saying how much you adore um, the guillotine. From one cutting device to our absolute ultimate three sets of scissors for you today all with the power, all with the strength, all with the precision, but all with different uses in essence due to those different sizes. We've had people messaging in earlier on. Uh, Lynn says, CC scissors are the best. I have four sets and they are the only ones I use now. I love that. Thank you so much for letting us know that. Um, I like Rosalind as well. She said, I put 
do not use on my CC scissors. Everyone knows um, that they can use any others, but not these ones. I love that, Rosalind. Thank you for letting us know that. This is, you know, our wonderful um, friends here chatting to us, letting us know they've got them, they love them. If you've not tried them at that price, now's your chance. You've got the large, the medium, and the snips as well. Nine inch, six inch, and your four and a half inches on their ones. And you're getting over 20% discount. But if you use the code CTV10, you get an extra percent, 10% off that as well. So well worth treating yourself to that one whilst you have the opportunity to do so. Because they really, are um they're proper crafting scissors they aren't really they? really are crafting scissors so like you say it's that sort of don't let other people use them for other things at all so they have a non um, stick coating on the blade and you think well why do i need that if i'm cutting paper well there'll be times when you're going to be cutting um something like your you know your red liner tape now if i was to tape my red liner if i wanted to tape on here and my red liner tape ran over the edge if i had an un, um, a pair of scissors that wasn't non-stick when i cut that off there the red liner would stick to the scissors whereas you saw that it just repelled it and came off so i can now cut straight there that sounds a really silly thing but if you get lots of adhesive stuck to your scissors you've got to clean them and they're going to be a real pest it's a faff isn't it it is a faff yeah. it really is now what i've got here is i've just got some textured cardstock which i think is about 250 gsm i folded it three times so i've now got 750 gsm if i take my scissors and i put these in here look at how easily i'm cutting through 750 gsm you can come down with the smaller scissors and i can still cut without any pressure at all 750 gsm of cardstock so just remember you know it absolutely they are so strong now we mentioned this quite a bit before and they've got markings on here so people might say why do you need the markings the markings mean if i want to cut one inch up to there i'm going to start at the two inch mark and i'm going to cut until that one inch mark hits the and that's perfectly cut like that or i could put my cardstock up to the one inch mark and i could just cut to the end of my scissors and i know that both of those cuts are going to be exactly one inch in length or you know you can do um, a two and a half inch cut pop it to there and that is exactly two and a half inches i haven't had to measure i haven't had to you know put a pencil mark on my project or worry like that now it's up to you which scissors you like so a lot of people use fussy cutting fussy cutting i like to use a large scissor because i like i like the the way you can you know come all the way down with your scissors now did you see now i don't know if you can see from that angle if i saw if you look at straight on when i'm cutting like that what I tend to do is I clamp my elbow into my waist. This is the way I do it. So I clamp my elbow into my waist. I hold my scissors straight on. And then I turn my cardstock. I don't move my scissors. The only movement my scissors are doing is opening and closing. And you see, my scissors haven't moved at all. It's my cardstock that moves and rotates not my scissors so that's just to show you i like to fussy cut with large scissors um our craig likes to cut, fussy cut with snips and i've not got a pair of snips over here he goes even smaller than that to do his fussy cutting you've got all three in this pack that means that you can now experiment and find out which scissors work best for you for which job but they're really really strong they're going to last a, a very very long time and you know that non-stick coating is absolutely perfect they just ergonomically sit nicely in your hand it's go. just wonderful every single time we bring scissors on there's always just like an influx of people telling us how much they love them um lynn you've gotten in lynn saying at that price i might have to get another set of the scissors um Shelley, uh, you've said something that has just raised so many questions. Um, my daughter-in-law sews hot air balloons. No, wow, okay. Sews hot, so are we saying sews hot air balloons as in like, oh, I'll put this little hot air balloon on a cushion, or are we saying 
those hot air balloons that people actually get into. It can't be yeah. that, can it? Why not? What's the rest of her question say? What's the rest oh, of her question? Oh, all right. You want to get onto that? Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> My daughter-in-law daughter sews hot air balloons and was going through scissors constantly. I bought her a set of CC scissors and she has now had her name engraved on them because people keep trying to steal them. She's making big hot air balloons. Do you she's reckon? making real that question, she's definitely making big hot air balloons. Definitely. I know this sounds really silly, but I wouldn't expect you to sew a hot air balloon. Because sewing creates holes, and notoriously, that's not what you want in a hot air balloon, <laughs> isn't it? Do you sew? Because a hot air balloon has to be made out of panels. Yes, of course, yeah, yeah. So to get the shape. Yeah. Do you sew over them, sew them, and then put something reinforced? Maybe. I would imagine you'd then put Maybe. an adhesive. You'd put Maybe. an adhesive backing over where the holes are. That's right. how I would it, see it. Yeah, that does make a lot of sense. Because I'm thinking sails as well on a boat. You sew a sail on a boat. Right, yes. Yeah, yeah. And you don't need the wind to go through that as well. No, that's true. That makes sense. I but a hot think... air balloon. Wow. What? Wow. Um, Shaddy has also messaged in. Uh, news just in. Shelley's daughter sews actual hot air balloons. Real hot air balloons. Real big ones that people get in. Does she go hot air ballooning? Have you ever been on a hot air balloon? Oh, your daughter. Yeah, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. Imagine that. What do you do for a job? Oh, I just uh, sew hot air balloons. That's so cool. I've never heard that as a job before. Anyway, um, that's, thank you for that. Shadia has said, um, I have two sets of these scissors. Um, one is for paper and one set is for soft craft. My hubby was told to step away from the scissors when I saw him with them in his hand, so it is now out of his sight. Uh, see, you can tell how much people absolutely adore these, so if you want to have and go and find out what everyone's sort of hyped about them, now is your chance to get them. If well, you use a pair for soft crafts, sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you. No, if you use a pair for soft crafts, tie a ribbon around the handles of your soft craft ones, because you should never cut paper with scissors that are meant for fabric. Because yeah. you'll blunt them. Yes, 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 yes. So if, the, if this is your set for soft craft, just tie a little ribbon round the handle of each one. Won't get in, won't interfere, won't get in the way. And then at a glance, you know they're your soft craft ones and they're your paper ones. Sorry, Great didn't mean to interrupt. Tip. No, don't be silly. Um, are scissors for left-handed people also? Asks Judy. I don't know. Is the answer? They're cutting. I know. Look at that. I'm left-handed cutting. person. I'm cutting left-handed. It feels very strange, but I'm cutting left-handed. Absolutely fine. I'm left-handed. Craig's left-handed. Michelle's left-handed. We all use these scissors. Yep. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, no, no issue whatsoever. If you do love tools, let me bring you another one or six. Let's bring to you now your six feet steel collection. Lovely Corinne's been using quite a few of these today, including the likes of the pokey tool and the tweezers um, and the um, edge uh, distressor as well. We've got all of these on your screen right now, all of them in one place. They're all going to, uh, they're all the types of tools that you buy once and then essentially you've got them. You don't have to pay for them again. And today they are just $15.99 or $24.49. They're really easy for you today. Well, we have got in two hours time, set your alarm, Monday makers. Corinne, what are we looking forward to in that? We've got demos with our interlace, which we gave you a sneak peek of earlier. We've got demos with our silhouette florals and some more demos with our shadow sentiment stamps and dies. Perfect. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? Yeah, perfect. So, yeah, we're going to demo all of those later. That sounds fabulous. So do set your alarms. We'll be back with you in two hours. Can I also just remind you, whilst you are um, sat there waiting for us to check them out, don't forget that if you add anything to your basket, do just think about adding that CTV10 code because uh, it's going to give you that extra 10% off. We are heading off now. We'll see you in two hours. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. We'll see you later.